do you know what a codec is? And I'll be honest, like I thought I knew what a codec was, but I was watching a recent episode of the YouTube channel called Speed, and they were discussing, I don't know if it was a study or a paper or something, that was looking into words that women know that men don't, and vice versa. And codec was one of these words that apparently men know. Uh, about 88% of men know what a codec is. And I thought I knew what codec meant, but it, it turns out I didn't exactly know what codec meant. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, I recognize this word to the point where I was relieved when I saw it. I was like, oh, codec. <laughs> and it kind of turns out that that is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to confusing terminology with regards to Bluetooth. Hey folks, I'm Mark Ryan, this is Super Review, and in this episode of Waveguide, we're gonna dive into what do Bluetooth terminology, how do, they, how do all these words relate to each other, how to make sense of them, because I feel like for me, and probably for most people, like the Bluetooth version number feels like the most easy thing to grapple with. It's like, okay, if I'm shopping for something that's Bluetooth, I'm gonna go for the product that has the highest version of Bluetooth. And as it turns out, that is actually the least helpful way to shop for products that have Bluetooth features. Um, in fact, even the folks at Bluetooth will tell you that the Bluetooth version number is almost, well, it, it is actually the, the least meaningful thing that you can know about it. So, well, what about all the other terms, whether it's Bluetooth codecs, whether it's A2DP profiles, whether it's Bluetooth LE versus Bluetooth Classic, how does this all make sense? Well, again, that's what we're gonna talk about today. I also wanna talk about if you are shopping for a Bluetooth product, how should you go about doing this? Because again, I think the version number is not the way that you should go about this. And well, I guess before we get to that, a quick shout out to HiFiGo for making waveguide videos like this one possible. HiFiGo is an online retailer of all kinds of things audio. They've got some Bluetooth stuff, but they've also got a lot of really nice HiFi headphones and IMs and audio players. If you wanna check them out, of course, I've got them linked down below. But let's, let's, let's talk about some terminology first. All right, so we're gonna go through a diagram that I put together in Figma, which I know sounds like maybe not the most exciting thing, but this is a pretty helpful tool for me to understand these Bluetooth terms as I encounter them out in the real world, watching YouTube videos like this, reading articles on The Verge, or shopping for products on Hi-Fi Go. Finding these terms, encountering them, and then kind of like putting them into this taxonomy, this mental model helps me understand them. Hopefully it works for you as well. So Bluetooth version, again, is kind of like the the term that I think most people are the most familiar with. You've got Bluetooth version two, Bluetooth version four, 5.3, 6.0, et cetera. But as we kind of talked about, this is not the most meaningful. I would think of Bluetooth versions as like collections of features or collections of updates. But what's important to know is that just because a product supports, let's say Bluetooth 4.0 introduced Bluetooth LE, low energy. But just because a product qualifies for Bluetooth 4.0 doesn't necessarily mean that it supports Bluetooth LE. And this is gonna be an important theme as we go through this is just that, just because kind of like the, the higher level condition is satisfied, in this case, Bluetooth version, doesn't necessarily mean that the condition below, like the feature that you're looking for, is actually supported. So this is where having this mental model can help. So let's go down further to this next category I have called modes. And you can see that these are tied to these other versions or these other, yeah, we'll call them versions. So Bluetooth 2.0, for example, only supports Bluetooth Classic. Whereas Bluetooth 5.3 and Bluetooth 6.0, they both support Bluetooth Classic, but they also support Bluetooth LE. And this difference between modes, I think is worth understanding as kind of unlocking a different set of features. It's like a, a branching tree. If you're playing like Skyrim and you're picking your skills, maybe not the best analogy, but, it helps me. Um, a thing also that I encountered as I was playing around with Bluetooth products that helped me understand this mode switching thing is that I have some products like the Sony XM6. It's a headphone that supports Bluetooth Classic and Bluetooth LE. And what's interesting is that when I switch modes, it has to like reboot the entire device. So it's like the device has to start in Bluetooth LE mode in order to use the features and the, the profiles of Bluetooth LE. I don't know that that's necessarily a case for all Bluetooth products. I don't think that that's necessarily like a requirement for switching modes, but it is nonetheless a, a thing that I've observed and a thing that helps me understand that modes are almost like, I don't know, it's like switching personalities, right? It's like you wake up and you are now in Bluetooth Classic or Bluetooth LE mode. Now, underneath modes, we have profiles. And these are some examples of profiles, but this is not a comprehensive list of different profiles. But I think the best way to maybe 
for me to understand profiles is profiles almost act like, if we're continuing this analogy of switching personalities, profile, profiles are kind of like your, your arms and your legs. They're like the, the way that you do a certain feature. All right. Um, maybe another way to think about this is uh, their channels or uh, maybe APIs if you're into, into programming. Basically, you know, if you're using a Bluetooth device and you want to interface with a keyboard, you would use the human interfaces device profile. Uh, if you wanted to integrate with a headphone, you would use the A2DP profile, right? This is basically just, it's the language. Maybe that's the better terminology. This is the language that Bluetooth LE or Classic communicates with your device. Um, and then you can also see down here, there are some of these profiles that are actually exclusive to Bluetooth low energy, LE, um, including LE audio and broadcast audio, which is also sometimes marketed as AuraCast. So if you've heard about AuraCast before, that is a profile underneath Bluetooth LE. Now, underneath these profiles, there's audio codecs, and this is kind of, I guess, the term that we started talking about. And maybe this is a bit of a diversion, but as it turns out, codec stands for coder decoder. It's like a contraction of two words. Oh! And it means to refer to a device or even a piece of software that can take something, encode it, and then also that device or piece of software is capable of receiving an encoded thing and decoding it, right? So in, in this example, uh, these are audio codecs. So they're capable of taking an uncompressed PCM audio signal, compressing it, encoding it as AAC, sending it out to your headphone, and then your headphone can receive that AAC and decode it and turn it back into PCM audio. So that's basically what an audio codec is. Um, and these all have kind of their own like branching pass underneath them. They've got, you know, bit rates, they've got uh, different latencies, et cetera, et cetera. But I don't know, I, this, this alone right here was enough for me to actually start to have a pretty strong mental model of just these Bluetooth terminologies. Again, like if you're looking for a certain feature, let's say you want LDAC in your Bluetooth headphone, it's not enough to go up to, you know, Bluetooth 6. Like I'm gonna buy the latest Bluetooth 6 device and make sure that it has LDAC. Just because you buy a device that supports Bluetooth 6 does not mean that it's gonna support LDAC. So I guess my advice would be, if you're shopping for Bluetooth products like this, start with actually the feature, start with the bottom rather than starting with the version number and then kind of work your way back from there. Now, unfortunately, it's not that easy. The truth of the matter is that you're probably gonna to have to do a little bit of research and like dig into it for yourself. And another thing that's important to know when you're shopping for these Bluetooth features, let's say it's LDAC or maybe Auracast, right? Auracast is a feature that allows one Bluetooth host, let's say your smartphone, to broadcast your Spotify stream to multiple headphones at the same time. Maybe you could listen to music with your friends all at once, or maybe you could distribute that to multiple Bluetooth speakers or something around you. That's like a, a cool feature called Auracast. So, so look for a product that supports Auracast, but importantly, you also need to think about not just the Bluetooth speaker or the headphones supporting that feature, you also need the host device to support that feature. And that's where this gets really, really complicated, right? If I wanna use Bluetooth LE audio, I need a headphone that supports Bluetooth LE audio, and I need a device that supports Bluetooth LE audio. And as it turns out, this is actually more complicated than you might expect. Uh, these are a couple of documents that I found online. I will have these linked in the description if you wanna check them out. Hopefully they're helpful, uh, but basically, right, you can look into, this is a, a list of Bluetooth profiles that Apple operating systems support, both iOS and iPad OS. And I think Mac OS has a similar set of features, right? It supports the hands-free profile, which is kind of what you expect, phone book access. But what's notably missing from this is LE Audio. LE Audio is not a profile that is currently supported by Apple devices. So no matter what you do, no matter which headphone you buy, looking for LE Audio support, because Mac OS and iPad OS and, and iOS don't support it, well, you're not gonna get that feature on that product. Uh, there's also here a page from Microsoft that goes through the different profiles that are supported on Windows. Again, this is a nice, helpful resource, but it's also still kind of not the, the end all be all because you know there's different versions of Windows. This is version, this is Windows 11, but even within Windows 11, there's 11, probably 0.1, 0.2, et cetera, et cetera, as they release updates to it. And I guess what I'm kind of getting at is just that while I would love to give you a nice, simple answer, this is how you shop for a product, 
the companies out there are really not making it easy for us. And I guess my advice is just that we need to, we need to apply some level of pressure. And it's like, hey, quit telling me that your product supports Bluetooth 6.0 because it's not that useful. Please tell me which features your product supports. And that's the way that we need to start thinking about shopping for Bluetooth products. Basically that shortcut that we all use by looking at the version of Bluetooth and thinking that that is telling us something about the capabilities of devices, frankly, just not very useful. But hopefully this episode of Waveguide was useful, in which case, shout out to HiFigo for making Waveguide videos like this one possible. If all this Bluetooth stuff sounds kind of annoying, I mean, HiFigo does sell Bluetooth stuff, but they also sell a lot of wired analog IMs and headphones, which is frankly what I usually use when I'm listening to music. If you wanna check out some of those, I've got them linked in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you haven't already, well, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, and join me on Discord. And I'll catch you on the next Super Review. Cheers. Share your thoughts in this pursuit.